Hi, this is Kate Sam from EatSmartHSmart.com and I wanted to go over the memorable moments from The Biggest Loser Season 8 Episode 4. So obviously it's really no surprise that after all of the drama that happened yesterday and hopefully you did actually watch my um, review for last week's show, it was amazing and, and so much drama happened during that show. But it's really no surprise that considering how much drama there was during that two hour period that the first segment of this week's show would basically show Shay confronting Tracy for the decision that she made. So that was very interesting. And what was also very interesting is the next day um, Coach Bob um, met with everybody and I think that one of the things he said was that you know it's true that everybody basically needs and deserves to be here but people have to earn it so I think that was sort of a message um, as well to, to Shay and I think she really uh, understood that now this week's channel challenge was really interesting and it really brought to life what happens in the real world basically all the participants went into the kitchen with Allison they looked around and they were like what is going on Basically, all of the cabinets and the refrigerator were padlocked and chained. For seven days, no one could access the food from the Biggest Loser's house. And simply, um, the reason was because the food that's in the house is uh, basically healthier options, um, clean options, food that these participants need to eat to lose weight. And the challenge of this week was that for the three meals of the day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, everybody would have to order out. And now you have to consider that most of these people in the past, before The Biggest Loser, had been ordering food, takeout food forever, but rarely, most likely, had they ever thought of what it is that they were ordering, or else obviously they would not be on a reality TV show like The Biggest Loser because they wouldn't have uh, weight issues. So that was interesting. It was interesting to actually see when the group understood that this was a huge challenge because they were basically ordering blind. They didn't know how many calories, what kind of sauce, was there frying, sugar, all that. Those are things that they could no longer control. But the reality is, in the real life, it happens all the time. You go to a restaurant, you have to order a meal based on the menu. You have to make the decisions as to I'm going to order this or not, or I'm going to have the dressing on the side or not, or I'm going to say no to the chicken wings or not. So it was interesting. It was also interesting to notice that how when the first um, ordering happened and everybody was sitting down with their food and they had made you know, careful decisions as to what they wanted, it, what they didn't want, what they were going to, to live without, that sometimes when they ordered their meals and they opened uh, their meals that they actually had, like for instance, we, show, we saw Liz who had ordered a salad without cheese and she had her salad covered with uh, bits and pieces of cheese which she had to remove. Another interesting part was Julio, sorry, Julio, um, who uh, ordered his meal without fruit because he's allergic to melon and he had melon in his order. So that was really interesting and I think that um, all of the participants realized that when you do order out, you're not in control of your food and you're not in control of what you intake. Now, the interesting part as well about this was that when Julian and Bob found out of this challenge, they decided to take everybody out and show them basically how to eat in a real restaurant in front of a real menu. Now. You know, for somebody who's not dealing with weight loss issues, this may seem as easy as brushing your teeth. But for somebody who doesn't necessarily know how to properly read a menu, this could actually be a huge challenge. So um, you're going to have to uh, bear with me. I'm going to have to read my little notes here because I have seven tips that Bob and Julian shared with the contestants when they were at the, the table, at the dinner table, and everybody went to a Mexican restaurant, I believe it was called Spanish Kitchen uh, Mexican Restaurant or Mexican Recipes or something of that nature. And uh, I mean, we're talking about chips and salsas and margaritas and burritos and fried food. So they really had 
to be conscious of every single item on uh, the menu. Now, there are a couple of things that I can tell you uh, right now, uh, some of the tips that Bob and, and Julian share, which for me, has, it's always been obvious. And one of them is to visit the restaurant's website and to know in advance what kind of food you're going to be able to order. I do it just because I love food so much and I'm so always so excited to know what's on the menu. But they suggest doing it in advance so that you can actually mentally prepare yourself and you know in advance, okay, well, you know what, I'm not going to go for this, but I might go for that, I might go for this, maybe not this. So that is definitely uh, one of the seven tips. Another tip is to actually, and I, I, I apologize, I'm going to have to read these, uh, to remove temptation. And, and I do that all the time. And again, it's sort of the mentality of somebody who is struggling with weight and somebody who's not. I do not eat always the bread basket that they put in front of me. First off, I have to like the bread. It's got to be the quality of bread that I would buy if when I buy my, my bread. I'm not going to eat lower quality bread. And to be quite honest, even when it's the quality of bread that I would eat, depending on how much bread I've had that day, I may not eat it. So resisting temptation is basically saying no, and that's what the group said when the waiters came in with chips and salsa. Number two is determining your why. And this was Julian talking to Rebecca. You have to know why you want to lose weight. Just saying you want to be thin, fit in skinny jeans, it has to really resonate within the depth of your soul or else you're not going to achieve that goal. Talking about goal number uh, three, am I am at, I'm at number four. Number four is goals need purpose. And that's again sort of um, very related to what I just said. It's not just I want to do this, I want to fit into skinny jeans. You have to really have a purpose that's really strong. I'm tired of being fat. I'm tired of carrying this weight on my shoulders or on my knees. I'm tired of being unhealthy. Those are goals with purposes. Number uh, five, it's um, when you are at the restaurant, you want to avoid um, sautéed food and pan-fried food. Now, I have to say that I sometimes will indulge, and I cannot say no to fried calamaries. So once in a while, I will indulge in fried food, but it is, again, not all the time, and it's not every time I go out. Number eight, if you are going to eat, you want to try your meats, should I say, you want to try to keep it to grilled, sautéed, broiled, uh, and baked, and poached. So those are cooking methods that you actually uh, wanted to uh, choose from when you eat at a restaurant. And last one is asking questions. Now, this is something that I have to do because I have some food allergies, and I'm always concerned about what exactly did quite the challenge. And basically, all of the participants had to hold on uh, on this board that started horizontal but that basically shifted in this really steep angle so they were all holding to these straps you know their hands were completely sort of stretched and they're holding on to these straps and basically they only have their hands holding on the entire way and Shane made a comment saying oh my god my hands have to hold on to 400 something pounds and that's when you realize your weight. But what was shocking was that I thought perhaps that Alan, who was the firefighter, might win this one. But oh no, Daniel, the one who got eliminated on uh, episode um, four of last week, wanted this so badly that he actually held on. And thanks to his determination and his mantra, because he said the whole time he kept saying to himself, immunity, 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 because actually the winner of this challenge guaranteed immunity for the winner and the teammate. So having Shay and Daniel win this was amazing for Shay, and it was amazing for Daniel, especially because when we got to the weigh-in, woo, things got nasty. But um, another interesting thing, I want to talk about Shay, because Shay's my girl, I love Shay. And she was the last woman standing, or should I say holding, and she held on for 10 minutes. She held on her entire weight. So that was really, really, really incredible. Now, when it came to the weigh-in, there were a lot of surprises. Um, Daniel, uh, for instance, did not lose any weight. He ended up with zero weight loss, and, and that was very disappointing. And she didn't, win, didn't lose all that much. Again, Tracy, mm, who could not exercise because of her injury, the one that she sustained during episode one, 
Imagine that. She was still able to lose four pounds with no walking, no swimming, no nada. The only thing she could do was sit down, and she still managed to lose four pounds. And that really got the rest of the group quite upset because we do remember from last week, she's not liked anymore. Um, at the end of it, somebody had to fall below the low, the yellow line. And the two teams who fell below the yellow line this week was Brown team. And it was, I believe, Liz and Randy. And uh, the black team, which now is only Julio standing. And the group had to make a decision. And they decided to send Julio home. Um, I think Julio at that point in time had shown that he could actually take on this challenge and win. He did lose four pounds. It wasn't huge, but he kept at it. What was really fair. So again, you can come to eatsmarthsmart.com. There's tons more information, and I hope that you found this video valuable. Hey, don't forget to rate it if you liked it.